Hi everyone, welcome to the Diva Ferrino video tutorials. This is Kara, and this is the second in um, a series of tutorials that I'm doing using this uh, classroom model to show various sort of tips and tricks as well as some of the advanced uh, or more involved uh, functionalities of um, of Diva. In this tutorial, what we're going to um, learn how to do is how to create a section cut view um, a, and a parallel projection view of your uh, model so that you can kind of uh, see in a rendered properly lit day lit um, view what your model looks like kind of in um, in section. What we're going to do is go to the wireframe and the first thing I think would be helpful is to go ahead and uh, copy your desks, your whiteboard, um, and your person. Um, go ahead, select objects. And go ahead and copy them to the other floors. And this will be useful for comparison later. Um, you don't have to do it. Um, you can still sort of get the same effect, but I think it would be nice, nicer to have um, that in there. Um, again, we can turn off the lighting for now, the electric lighting. Um, we'll get to that in one of the future tutorials. So, so the first thing we're going to do is set up uh, the basic view that we want to capture. And I have, there are two layers here that I've um, given. Um, they're helpful for me. It's a viewpoint camera and a viewpoint target layer. So go ahead and make the viewpoint target or camera layer active and go to your top view. Zoom extends and create a point object. I'm going to just turn on project for now and create a point object uh, in the middle of the west facade here and then go ahead and move it uh, 40 feet um, to the west. And then uh, go ahead and do turn on your viewpoint target uh, layer, make that active. And go ahead and put a uh, point right in the middle of the whiteboard there. And now change to perspective view or actually if you'd like uh, the front view and we want to put our viewpoint um, basically pretty much at eye level sort of in the center here vertically and we want to make sure that our target viewpoint is in the middle of the whiteboard. Okay so now we've created uh, two reference points and uh, what we're going to do is make sure you have your properties um, dialog showing up here. Um, and we are going to go ahead and place our target. Um, so if you see here's target, um, click place and turn off project. And uh, go ahead and click on our point that we want to be our target point here. And then go ahead and click on camera and click on our camera point. And uh, the reason I do target first is uh, just experience has told me that uh, it's easier to locate the camera once you place the target than the other way around. So now uh, we have sort of a perspective uh, view that is, um, you know, um, you know f in in plane with the uh, western facade, and. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and make it a little easier on myself and save it uh, as cut away in case I need to refer to it later. Click OK, close. And if we shade this um, view, you can see um, it's not particularly uh, helpful or exciting. So, um, but nevertheless, uh, the first step we need to do is to actually run the image metric here. Now I'm going to assume that you've already uh, gone through the other tutorial um, in terms of how to set up this model and you have done the, uh, the three steps uh, up to uh, running the metrics and maybe even have run the metrics uh, button already. Um, 
So if you haven't, um, please go ahead and uh, do those three things uh, first. Uh, go ahead and click the metrics button. Make sure you have daylight images uh, selected, visualization, and uh, we're going to want to select medium quality because um, eventually we're going to want an interior view. Um, and as I mentioned before, medium or high quality tends to work out better for those uh, conditions. Um, and uh, then also, uh, for now, we can just leave these other um, these other options as is. Um, and actually, I'm not going to turn on generate TIFF image uh, from the moment. So let's go ahead and click Run Simulation, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the narration while it's running. Okay, so we're getting a little bit farther. Here we have our rendered view now uh, of our perspective, but clearly um, this isn't where we want to be because we uh, are still just looking at the outside of the building. Um, so here is where things start to get a little bit interesting. Um, let's go ahead. I'm just gonna save these so we have sort of a a running uh, record of uh, what we're doing. Go ahead, save that, and close the viewer. Now, when we set up our model, um, if we look at uh, the file organization I was suggesting uh, in the other tutorial, um, I've created a folder just for this model where I've put the Rhino file um, just to keep things organized and then of course the results file automatically gets created. Uh, don't worry about the search plugins uh, folder. And if we open that, you know, this is the uh, the automatically created results files that you should probably be familiar with at this point. And uh, these were the the images that we created the last tutorial and this is the one that we just created here. So that is our sort of local storage but what we want to um, explore a little bit is the kind of behind the scenes files that uh, Diva uses, um, the Radiance files that Diva uses to um, produce the images. So go to your C Diva drive so that's again the C Diva. And you want to go to your temp folder here. And actually, uh, I have actually made a little bookmark over here just to help myself with it. Um, if you click on temp and then look for the uh, folder uh, or actually the name of the file that you're currently working on. So let's go ahead and click that. And you can see that we have a series of files in here. Now typically these are, as I said, like behind the scenes files. They're necessary for the running of Diva um, and uh, Radiance Day Sim, etc. But uh, most of the time you don't need to worry about them or, um, or even know that they're there. Um, but being able to sort of manipulate these uh, gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of the representation that you can get. So. The one file that we are going to be interested in right now is this um, the D4R, so the name of our file, and then the part that says IMG at the end. So that basically is the nomenclature for the image batch file. So you can see it says Windows batch file. A batch file, um, for our purposes, basically means that if you double click on it, it's going to execute um, a you know, a script, a command. Um, so that'll come in handy uh, in a little bit. But for now, um, like most of these files, uh, if you right click on it, you can open this file in TextPad here. And what you see here is um, some lines uh, that are uh, basically tell um, Radiance what to, how to run the image file that. Uh, that we have set up. So this is all the information um, for the image that we just ran. Now it probably just looks like uh, a mess um, for you at the moment if you're not familiar with this, but um, I'm going to explain what these uh, various um, things mean and particularly the ones that are important to us. Um, and then it won't be so mysterious and uh, it'll give you the ability to create this cutaway view that um, we want to. 
So one thing I'm going to point out um, that uh, especially if you don't want to go through this video after you've done it um, every time you want to produce one of these, um, a good reference is um, the R picked uh, page on the um, Radiance manual, online manual. If you just type in, you know, to your browser, R picked, it should be the first thing that pops up here. And what this, uh, this is a basically a general reference. You'll see that the, these sort of variables that are listed here um, refer to the variables that you see here. So the negative VTV, uh, if we look here, that's the first one that we have here. So uh, just to give an explanation of what this is, the negative sign or the hyphen and the two bold um, letters are sort of the option. So that describes the option and, and you don't change that but the element that's in italics after it that is sort of uh, the op uh, the thing that you can change, the, th the variable so to speak. And this point, uh, this area, this paragraph or sentence over here describes what that variable or that option does. So the first thing we want to look at is that first variable. It's a uh, negative VT and uh, it's it says here if t being the the second t here is set to v a perspective view is selected if the t is set to l a parallel view is used so that's going to be the first thing we want to change so if we go back to our um, text our, our uh, active file here we're going to go ahead and want to change the v here to an l and uh, for each of these things we're going to have to do it twice. Um, because it's uh, th it appears twice in this file. So we'll go ahead and change that to L. So that's the first step um, and that has now changed our perspective view to a, um, a parallel view. Now the next thing, and we'll just save that just to keep things um, in order. The next thing, um, a lot of these values here come out of, uh, out of Diva. So Diva sets them for you. Um, so we're not going to actually touch all of them. The next one we actually want to deal with, however, is um, the the critical one actually for this um, exercise is the VO um, option. And you can see that the VO and actually the VA is the corresponding uh, one to it is sets the four clipping plane at a distance of val the the val here uh, from the viewpoint. And uh, this is actually how we're going to create our clipping plane. So if we go over here and we look for VV, which uh, we'll deal with in a second, we're going to go ahead and add hyphen VO. And if you remember, we set our uh, camera point at 40 feet off of the western facade. So we want it to, um, to uh, cut maybe 50 feet in, so about 10 feet into the room, let's say. I mean, you could do 60 feet. It's not particularly critical, but it is critical that they have that relationship. So uh, if you make this too big or too small, you either won't get your section cut or you'll overshoot it. So go ahead and add that same term here. You need spaces separating the VO, um, the value, and the next uh, term there. So go ahead and save that. Go back to that image file. And so before we opened this image file and edited it in the text pad, but now what we're going to do is double click on it and that is going to set it to run just like it would if you were running the metrics from the Diva dialog. Again, I'm going to pause while it runs um, and, uh, and wait until it produces the pic file.